So I work at Boeing in the role of a senior software data architect. And before I give this presentation and the session, uh, I just want to make a uh, disclaimer that you know none of this work is associated with Boeing. It's a very personal initiative. And whatever I'm speaking is from my personal experiences has nothing to do with Boeing. So talking about graph label, it's kind of a UI tool, which I have built very specifically focused on how do you label data in the graph world. Some of the elements when you talk about graph data is how do you organize the data? How do you label it? And you know, how do you extract the information? Because that's eventually how do you integrate a large language model with this backend data which stores all of your knowledge graph in terms of the data? So I'll introduce graph label in terms of what it does, a very small demo in terms of what it is capable of doing right now. Uh, this idea has been more focused around the paradigm of RHG, which is a retrieval augmented generation. One of the inspiration from which uh, I got this idea is from the haystack. I think they're one of the very creative people who are building this annotation tool. If you see the haystack site, you can go for the annotation. It's an open source tool and they're trying to uh, annotate some of the data here in some of the documents which an update and they're kind of labeling the data here by selecting a particular statement here and choosing one of the questions which they have marked here and this is how you generate the data let's say a document you mark it you annotate it with particular questions and this is what you can feed into your large language models in terms of further training uh, or further inference now, so I, I'll talk more about in terms of what we are trying to build into graph. One of the limitations which I saw in the haystack tool is that it is more built into the NLP process. It's kind of just you can think about natural language expect, but when you compare it to the knowledge graph, it's more about you know annotating particular parts, how do you compare it, what are the relationships, you know, that's what makes it more powerful. So these are the four expects which you know I'm trying to build into it. The very first is data labeling. Second is how do you recognize the different entities present within that particular document? The third is how do you relate you know what are how these documents are related because that gives you the power you know in terms of correlating and querying and searching across these documents in a knowledge graph so uh let me you know reshare my screen and i'll show you the work i've been doing here. okay perfect i can see it so I think this code has been completely shared in an open source repository. You can visit github.com slash graph label. So it consists of five parts. I can very quickly show you, you know, and it's completely built on Docker. So anyone can just uh, clone this repository and start this up. So first is we are using Neo4j as the graph database where we are storing these entities which we have extracted. Minio is kind of a storage database very similar to S3 for storing the files which we are uploading. Postgres stores some of your metadata, but this again, I'm planning to change some of it in the future. And the third part is a Python based fast API, which takes requests from a uh, angular front and it's very easy to start it up you just do just do a docker compose up and you get the whole stack up so now if you see there are 
4 sets up near 4j database postgres menu and graph label now how the flow works is so this is the website which we are talking about it starts with the import where you import a particular document so i have a sample document here which stores some you know, information about the oldest nba team given my you know fan with nba so this file has been uploaded this request goes to the api service which is hosted and fast api what fast api currently does it, it it stores the metadata and postgres in terms of some of the metadata like content and it also stores the file and menu for backup and storage given that s3 is a very cheap storage this can be replaced menu can be replaced with s3 later and the third part it does is it also extracts these entities and stores into neo 4 data which we'll see now and all these three components are available and they can be queried to see what data has been stored in particular there. One of the future tasks which I'm planning to do is to um, decouple this process in, from the data processing in terms of using something like a Daxter or Airflow so that it takes seamlessly when a new file is uploaded into menu. But checking it out, uh, this is the documents which have been uploaded. There are three actions to it. The very first is uh, you can annotate a particular document. Second is create a few questions. Third is see what are the entities associated. The very first is we'll create a set of questions here. So very similarly, you can create more questions here, you can delete it here. And when you update, that is you know updated in the database. Now the second part comes is we have a document, how do we annotate it? Most different questions they appear on the left side here, and you have the document which lists on the right side, which kind of helps your annotation team to annotate these data particularly. So what you can do is we know that the Sacramento Kings is what is the oldest team in NBA. So I select this particular because that appears like an answer to my question and I label it here. Now, if you see it has labeled this particular answer with this question and I can update it. If I visit it later, I can still see, you know, what has been updated and this data can be also exported so that can be fed into a machine learning algorithm at a later stage. Now, coming to the second stage, where really the new 4J part helps in, if you see, we are fetching the entities which have been, you know, fetched through an NLTK library, and these are the different components which can be, you know, is associated with this here. Now, if you see, these are all the data in terms of the nouns, you know, the verbs, which are very associated with document. And this is where the power of new 4G comes into effect in terms of associating it with the NLP data. So this is how, what is the work which has been done until right now? The future work is in terms of also extracting the, the ontology or the triples from the data so that we can further connect it, the data across these documents. And this makes this particular interface kind of associated with labeling, data extraction, data relation. So giving you that power to see your data correlated and further query and search it.
So these are some of the benefits that you can generate high quality label data sets from large language model for your RAG searching. And this is particularly very helpful for data scientists, developers, and researchers, and particularly anyone working with graph data. This is my initiative in terms of revolutionizing, you know, how graph data annotation workflow can help with graph label and really uh, unlock the potential of large language most RG based search again graph models. Definitely would welcome any one of you who is interested to further share your ideas in terms of creating issues in the open uh, GitHub repository. And if you want to help me give your ideas open to feedback. Thank you so much for this session and to Neo4j particularly for this opportunity. Thank you so much.